Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, I think I have gained a reputation of being straightforward, and I get a lot of comments and charges on that, uh, especially not being so diplomatic. I think this time I'll keep it, and then I will. I would like to be very straightforward on a lot of, you know, questions and queries that has been raised in this forum. So I just want to make sure a few things here that uh, the government of Nepal is very much committed and promised. Uh, one example is right in front of us, which is just past ordinance is there. So we understand the problems that you've been facing. And I'm well aware of uh, the experiences that uh, all the investors having not only the um, experience and impression as well. We're well aware of the uh, impression and the experience that you all have. So I think this time uh, we are very much committed on many things. Especially we know about the complex of especially the land acquisition, especially buying, leasing uh, lands and all. So. Not only that, the issues of security, we are well aware of that. And then we will make sure that we are well aware of the situation. And then again, I would like to, you know, show my commitment that we will be taking care of the things in a historic way. This is our commitment from the Ministry of Home Affairs. And, uh, And we are all, we are well aware of, uh, you know, having a lot of unlawful activities from various groups, of groups, including political parties as well. So we are well aware of that also. Under my leadership in the Ministry of Home, uh, I just want to make a clear statement here that we are not only the security agency, we are a law, law enforcement agency as well. So just want to make a note on this. As we conclude this two-day Nepal Investment Summit, I am highly encouraged by the insights and enthusiasm that marked every session. We have seen a convergence of informed mind and innovative ideas that promise to shape the investment landscape here in Nepal. From comprehensive keynotes to vibrant panel discussions, we have explored trends, exchanged experiences, and posed connections or, you know, constructed the connections. Let's carry this spirit of collaboration forward, leveraging our collective experience, expertise, and resources to drive growth, create jobs, and innovate for the larger social goods. Regarding this session, leveraging the PPP for infrastructures and services, let me make three major points to complement this rich discussion, which I've heard so far. First, conceptually, capital uh, formation through infrastructure is an important source of economic growth and essential for development takeoff for countries like ours at a bit low levels of development. Roads, electricity, and the telecom are not just key inputs to production, but they also have large social externalities. The secondly, the financial deficit is huge in infrastructure. There is an estimate of McKinsey of funding gap of 15 trillion US dollar between global infrastructure needs and spending through 2030, particularly in developing countries. Because public finance is insufficient, we must attract private capital and leverage public-private partnership in proven areas. Financing of infrastructure has to be embedded in an, in, in an institutional web of good governance. Projects must be vetted. Processes must be transparent. And outputs must be subject to public screening or public edit. And thirdly, the scope of nature of infrastructure now needs to build in sustainability as well as resilience. We need to go for green infrastructure, avoid the mistakes of the past, and use the latest know-how. We can save a lot 
by just scaling best practices, selecting projects, optimizing portfolio, and streamlining delivery. Instead of just building new things, let us also think about how we can get more use of use or out of existing infrastructure by reducing losses, maintaining better, and managing demand smartly. On behalf of the government of Nepal, let me thank all speakers, partners, volunteers, and participants, especially our foreign delegates who travel far and wide to be with us this week. I'm hopeful that many of you will consider investing in Nepal. May the connections made here take us closer towards a safer and more secure future of shared prosperity. Thank you very much.